Hello, folks. This is RotorStorm331. Uh, back to doing some more um, Breath of Fire 2 guides. We're covering our second one involving Sten. Uh, we're going to be covering his strengths, uh, weaknesses, field, field and combat abilities, his best stats, and uh, what kind of uh, final gear you do want to uh, arm him with uh, if you do decide to bring him to the final parts of the game. So anyway, Sten's your uh, fifth party member that joins uh, right after uh, Nina does. Uh, pretty shortly in between the gap you do get her and go to Windia and leave the castle there. Uh, Sten's pretty much um, more of a luck-based agility fighter. He does have very decent strength, uh, as you can definitely tell. All of his stats have not been upgraded with um, stat-boosting items. So this is pretty much uh, Sten at raw. Without those boosts, uh, he'll have 146 strength. 101 stamina, 167 agility, 92 wisdom, and 189 on luck. So as you can definitely tell, his three best stats are luck, agility, and strength in that order. For the most part, uh, Stens are pretty much a very decent fire and probably one of your fastest characters. Uh, he does get outsped by uh, Cat and Blue, and he's outlucked by uh, Sean and Blue as well. Of course, Blue is just like OP as, as it is. <laughs> So it's very hard to do it, but if we were not to include Blue in the uh, playthrough, uh, he would be second in both in terms of agility and luck. So now that we've covered um, in regards to Sten's stats, I would like to go over his weapon options uh, briefly. Uh, as you can definitely tell, Sten uses daggers. Uh, he won't get a whole lot of daggers to use. Uh, his best one at the, at the time that he joins will be your silver dagger that you get from Joker's Hideout. Uh, he won't be able to get any new daggers until um, you go to Toonland for the first time. And from there on out, his weapon situation will be a lot more better. Uh, his own little options are Silver Dagger for Holy, uh, Banana Dagger for Fire, and uh, Frozen Dagger for Ice. So he doesn't have a whole lot of, um, doesn't have a whole lot of elemental weapon options, to say the least. A lot of his weapons are physical-based and damage. But for the most part, uh, Sten does pretty well on his own. Uh, and his shadow form is actually broken once we get to that point. So we're going to go ahead and cover uh, Sten's field and combat abilities now. Um, Sten here uses the ability called Reach. This ability enables you to uh, cross gaps when you see two poles in between each other. This basically covers like one space in particular. But uh, you'll find yourself using this ability a lot more than you think. It's not only to traverse uh, parts of the map, but it's also needed for uh, certain parts of the story where you need to get the mushroom from Mount Mori. Uh, you also need it to reach areas where um, treasure chests are out of reach. So you find yourself using Sten more than you would think you would be using. So another thing to keep in mind is that Sten is required to be used by the player temporarily uh, for an earlier part of Highport, as well as um, a boss fight, which I won't go into spoiler um, territory for that one, but I'll let you uh, know for that fact right now. So basically you'll be using STEM for that portion of Highport until you reunite with the entire party. Alright, so now that we covered his um, field ability, let's go ahead and cover his combat ability. So we're going to get into battle real quick. Now STEM's combat ability is Rest in Peace, aka Rip. Uh, basically what it does is that um, STEM will pretend to be KO'd. Uh, and attack the enemy while he's at it. And when he does that, he'll um, he'll throw off the enemy's attempts at attacking him. This is actually a good way to prevent enemies from targeting him, throw off the aggro on other party members. Uh, there is two uh, problems with this. First off, if you're playing with Sten alone, uh, he, uh, the enemies will not be fooled by this uh, play dead ruse. And second is that when you do attack Sten, um, his defenses go down considerably, so he'll take full damage uh, if he gets attacked. Now, from sources I've read, uh, he can counterattack when uh, using Rest in Peace, but I'm not positive if that's true or not. But for the most part, I would strongly recommend just re relying on attacking as opposed to um, utilizing uh, his um, Rest in Peace for the most part. Now we're going to warp back to, uh, before we warp back to Township for his uh, fusions. I'm going to uh, go over his spells. Um, Sten does not learn Renew or Cure 2 on its own. I chose to give uh, that spell to him as a result of Race Blessing. Of course, you can give it to any party member. Uh, Sten and Nina are probably the better candidates for it. 
these spells. Um, Stem doesn't have a whole lot of AP, but it's useful if you decide to kill off the villagers and uh, captain rather than rescue them. If you want them to have cure two for your fight in uh, boss, the first major boss battle at High Fort. And um, for the most part, but for the most part, Stem learns mostly uh, fire and wind spells, which I'll go over them real quick. Spark is the first uh, spell that he learns, uh, and it's automatically applied when he first joins up. Uh, this does minor fire damage that can deal anywhere between 25 or 30 damage. Mostly it's around 30 or 30 or 35 damage for the most part, and deals more damage if the enemy is weak against fire and less uh, if they're resistant against it. Bomb is actually um, one, of the, one of your only real available wind spells. I know Neo gets access to Typhoon and Tornado, but they do not deal wind-based damage, as far as I know, according to what I've learned on online for most parts. But I think Bomb and Missile do deal wind damage. Uh, this is actually effective against um, certain adversaries, like um, flying enemies and certain armor enemies, uh, like the armored monks and whatnot. So it deals anywhere between uh, 37 or 47 damage, depending on... Uh, whether or not they're weak against win or not. So you'll get this at level 9. So right around level 15 or 16, you'll get Flame uh, or higher. You get the Flame spell. This deals moderate fire damage to all enemies on screen. Uh, this will be very useful for a, a very long while, since there are some enemies around Simiport that are actually susceptible to fire. Uh, not so much when you go into the basement of Simiport, that is. But, um... Unfortunately, Stem, Stem won't have a whole lot of AP at the time, but you can get a few usages out of Flame uh, for the most part. Uh, Stem won't learn any more new spells until level 33, which he'll get with Fireball. Fireball is arguably as strong as Fire Spell he gets. Uh, you have to use 20 AP for use, but it allows him to deal anywhere between 110 to 115 so damage, and more if the target is weak against Fire. And at level 38, uh, Stem will learn Missile. This spell is probably the strongest uh, wind spell in the entire game and deals wind based damage to all enemies uh, and deals pretty much roughly uh, almost uh, 105 to 110 damage for the most part, uh, depending on formation usage and whether or not if targets are actually weak to this, they'll take more uh, damage from this spell as a result. So that covers uh, Sten spells. So we're going to go back to Township and uh, we're going to get him into Shaman form. So Stan gets two Shaman Forms uh, for Breath of Fire 2, ironically enough. Um, one of them actually causes a crash in the Game Boy Advance version. We're going to be going over that before we um, cover his actual fusion that he gets. So uh, depending on the party members that fuse, uh, if, they're, if they are if have an affinity for that sp uh, Shaman, they'll, they're, they'll stay in their actual appearance, but their appearance will change radically. Still. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you this right now. So um, Sten does get access to Senna. And Senna uh, enables him to change his form into um, you know, a reddish color and changes his vest color as well. Uh, this gives him fire, gives his weapon fire-based damage for the most part. It does amp up his offense a bit for the most part. Not really huge in this form, but um, this, this form does cause... Uh, a crash to occur in the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, if you do keep this on him throughout the entire uh, playthrough of High Ford and you defeat Shubkey during the uh, escape sequence, uh, when you get to the bridge where the party is escaping on, it will crash if Sten's in this form. So I would. This is actually one of the reasons why I don't really use uh, Shaman forms a whole lot because they might inadvertently crash at, at certain points where you don't want it to happen, especially during certain story plays. Parts, especially when you beat a, uh, a boss, that is. So I don't really use that that much, that form. So anyway, uh, Sten's actual fusion requires you to have set up Spoo. Spoo. Ironically enough, both of these can be acquired uh, during the uh, actual story. So Sten gets the benefit of having this Shaman form immediately. Uh, unlike the other party members where they have to wait until after Ivra is completed and they need, uh, need to have that. Spar is the only party member that can actually actually use Spoo, I mean, Sesso early to uh, get one of his transformations. 
But uh, most of the party members, you have to wait until after Ebra to be completed in order to get that. So anyway, we're, we're going to hunt down some Night Riders uh, because we're going to be covering uh, this ability real quick. So in Shaman form, Sten, uh, in his fused form, Sten gains the ability called Switch. Of course, this is not the actual name of it, but it allows you to swap whatever enemies you're fighting with different ones. Uh, this is, it's not really a spectacular ability, but it's great if you're hunting down rare item drops from enemies. And um, we're going to be using the Night Riders as an example. It's going to take quite a while, I should warn you. But technically, if you don't want to fight stronger enemies, you can also use Switch to avoid dealing with the stronger ones and fight weaker ones instead. But technically, this is very good if you're hunting down item drops. Of course, they're very hard to attain, pretty much, because of the way this game's RNG system works. Uh, but it does take quite a while, and it could be a very frustrating experience, I might add. But it's it's well worth the rewards if you can get those very rare, rare gear drops. Because a lot of the party members' best weapons and ultimate weapons have to be won through uh, bo uh, monster battles. So you do need to... Um, hunt down these monsters and get the, hopefully get the best gear. Sometimes it could come right away and then there's just, most of the time it takes a long, long time in order to get that. My apologies, we are trying to find the Knight Riders. Um, I, I theorize they might just appear more frequently during the evening, but that's not the case. Uh, which my um, time warp kind of pretty much described because you can actually encounter Knight Riders during daytime. They're just not, uh, they're very rare encounters. Uh, you can either encounter one or two, depending on uh, what you get. So there is no guarantees that you'll encounter Night Riders right off the gate. Sometimes you will, but a lot of the times it's very hard to get. Uh, I'm going to rest my mouth a bit so I can uh, continue focusing on switching. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that um, you don't know whether or not you'll get iron drops uh, at the start of the battle until the battle's ended. So the game might have already decided what item you, whether or not you get the item and what item you do get. Some monsters will have two item drops. One will be a more common drop, the other will be a more rare drop. And of course, uh, in some cases, uh, sometimes the best gear is actually shared in both slots. Night Rider has both the Medusa Shield and the Dual Twin Reaper. Dual Twin Reaper is Sean's ultimate weapon. That's one of the real reasons why we want to fight these Night Riders, because that is a chance of dropping that. Of course, if you don't want to take your chances buying uh, that from the Merino between um, Bando and Kotlin, uh, this is also a more somewhat safer choice to do, but uh, Night Riders are not very easy opponents to fight until you have access to G-Dragon. And right now, the Night Riders are just being jerks. <laughs> They just did not want to show up. Alright. Now, like I said before, even if we do defeat the Night Riders, there's no guarantee that we'll get an Iron Drop. But one thing to keep in mind, though, is that you do not want to be um, attacking uh, enemies before you switch. And that goes the same with our enemies. Because uh, once the battle starts, uh, you won't... That's pretty much it. You won't know whether or not you get the Iron Drop or not until the battle ends. And one of the things that makes uh, Night Riders more dangerous is the fact that these guys can crit in addition to hitting your party with uh, very powerful spells like Hail and Firewall. They can also use Typhoon as well. One thing to keep in mind though is that you won't know if these guys are critical you until they deliver the attack. So you won't know if they do a slam attack or not. Alright, so we didn't get an Iron Drop, but technically that's the whole gist of uh, using Sten's Shaman form. That's to hunt down those very, power very good Iron Drops. But other than that, uh, Switch doesn't really have uh, a whole lot of uh, potential for being used for anything but that. But it's very good if you don't want to fight more dangerous uh, opponents and fight weaker ones instead. But technically, as a cardinal rule in RPGs, you do want to make sure your party members are always strong regardless. Because you just don't never know as to what every editor is going to have some strong enemies. And if your party's not capable of fighting them, your party might not be very strong to face them at all. So anyway, that covers uh, Sten's Shaman form. So we're going to go over his final gear options if you're planning to take him to the end game. 
Uh, Sten's ultimate weapon is the Demon Dagger. Uh, this does not have any elemental priorities. It's actually one of the more easier final weapons, ultimate weapons to get. Uh, because you can actually have, there's two places you could possibly farm for this. Uh, you can hunt down chiefs and uh, thieves too, which are actually more safer, especially if you get to the part where you're fighting the, um, in the uh, faces tiles, where you can stun on the happy and smiling faces to refuel your party's HP and whatnot. Uh, you can use that to uh, safely farm uh, off of chiefs. Uh, they do drop holy shields as well, but the demon dagger is the real prize uh, to aim for when you're hunting these guys down. Uh, Demon Daggers can also be dropped by uh, D Spirits at Bando. Uh, they also drop Holy Shields as well, same as the Chiefs. Now, there is one enemy on the second part of Infinity that also drops a Demon Dagger. Uh, I forgot which one it is, but um, technically the, fir the first two are actually more safer options to farm for that weapon. Of course, if you don't want to take your chances with uh, farming for Omen gear, um, you can also try getting the Shadow Dagger, which you can get in Infinity Part 1. That's then its third best weapon in the entire game. And that can be acquired without any real effort. Uh, Slicer Dagger does require you to um, uh, fish a Marion uh, on the Isles near uh, Ivra. Uh, it, it's also where you can buy, purchase Death Rings. Uh, Slicer Dagger is also a non elemental weapon, uh, but it's not really his second best weapon option, but the Demon Dagger is probably the more better option in my opinion. Uh, Sten has three good body armor options to get. If you're going for store purchased armor, hero armor is probably his best option because you can get that from Beretta once she gets her store updated for the final time after Ebro is destroyed. Uh, if you're going for rare item drops, uh, the Ninja Model is his second best armor he can get. Uh, those can be acquired from the Dragoons on the second part of Infinity. Uh, they are rare drops, so keep that in mind if you're hunting that down. Uh, his best armor option is Sacred SH. Those can be acquired from either if if leads on both the Infinity first part of Infinity and the earlier parts of the second part of Infinity. And uh, you can also win these from K King Sludges on John and Isle. Of course, if you don't want to take a chance, Ninja Mall might be the more better option. Uh, for good helmets, uh, Shiny Helmet is probably Sten's best helmet. Overall, you can purchase that from Beretta as well. Uh, some enemies do drop this as a rare drop, though. So this is actually more easier to get. Um, Sten's best shield, of course, is Medusa Shield. Of course, if you don't want to take a chance of farming uh, enough uh, coins to purchase it from the Marino between Bando and um, Kotlin, you can also try to win those from uh, Knight Riders. Uh, those are the more common drops uh, over the no Twin Reef here. But if you don't want to do that, the Holy Shield is not a bad option either. Now, if you do want to equip him with accessories, I would strongly recommend boosting uh, Sten's defense and offense. You can equip him with Iron Bracelet. Those could be easily purchased from Hans if you recruit him, him to Township. Uh, that gives you like a plus 10 on his defense. Uh, Hero Belt, which can be purchased in the uh, Knight Rider Armory. Uh, I'll show you that real quick. Uh, you can purchase that there, and you can uh, upgrade your uh, party member's strength by 10 when they equip that. Now, as far as I know, Guts Belt is the one that's severely bugged. Uh, not that Guts is really useful for anything. Actually, I take that back. You can't purchase uh, Hero Belt here. <laughs> so, if you do want to give him the Hero Belt for more offense, that's also a good option for the most part. But, um, other than that, uh, I would rather prioritize defense. Uh, if you want to protect him from status elements, giving him the uh, Shining Bracelet is not a bad idea. Um, that's pretty much all the accessories. Of course, if you want to build up his wisdom, you can also give him the uh, y Supus Wall. But anyway, that's pretty much going to be it for the, um, the guide for Sten. Uh, it's not a very huge guide, but I hope it helps players that are getting into Breath of Fire 2, which is a 1994-95 game. Uh, from a long time ago, so that way people that do play this game will know what to expect when they play a Sten, and I will have more characters um, uh, being covered once they hit level 50. If you're wondering why I'm doing the, uh, all this at level 50 as opposed to level 99, it's that most of the party members won't get a whole lot of stat gains uh, from 51 to 99 from there on out. In fact, they get very less gains. So unless you're planning on maximizing all party members' stats through the uh, Carpenter that cooks foods, staff food items. Um, this is pretty much uh, 
uh, fair warning because this is how all your party members will look once they get to level 50 and they won't gain a whole lot once they go past uh, level 50. But anyway, that covers uh, the Sten Guide. Thank you for uh, stopping by to watch it. Uh, for those that uh, did stop by, uh, if you enjoy this content, uh, feel free to hit a follow on both my Twitch and my uh, YouTube channels. It'll definitely help or subscribe to them. Uh, it helps both of those channels either way. And I will conclude uh, today's guide, and I will catch you all tomorrow. This is RunnerStorm331 signing off. Have a great day. Take care, and I will see you all next.